Oh, here we go. Oh, wait. Okay, my deck list is completely mixed up here because this doesn't look like Malaga's Druid. Yeah, I think my deck list might be wrong as well. I'm, uh, yeah, apologies to anyone who's watching this. Dark Horse. Oh, it's Dark Horses. Okay, maybe I think the, the graphics were backwards. Ah, uh, um, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, sorry. So it's Dark Horse on the Warrior. On a... Yeah, okay, Dark Horse on the Druid, Titan R on the Warrior. Sorry. Apologies, Twitch chat. Right. You're going to have to bear with us because it looked like something did just go a little bit funky there. <laughs> Um, okay, so it is Odd Warrior. After this changes all. it drastically. It does. It changes everything. <laughs> well, Hakar Druid looks like a very clear favorite in this match. Yes, I agree. <laughs> this swings it around drastically. It's from Malagos Druid trying to have to kill their opponent to just... The Auctioneer is in hand. He's going to draw the entire deck. And then the Odd Warrior is just going to die. Yep. As long as the Hakar Druid plays, the, well, plays their cards carefully... They can do something like what seventy plus damage in one turn. Yeah, I mean, by... it, it, it's effectively an OTK. Hakar, innovate, spellstone down their own Hakar, and then the following turn, Tog, naturalize, naturalize. But he does have the all important card in hand of auctioneer. I mean, in terms of the mulligan with this deck, I've heard argument uh, amongst the pros that like, do you keep uh, ferocious how? Do you keep the branching parts, or do you literally just look for auctioneer? Uh, because against the non-aggro decks, there is nothing you care about other than hitting that ult here and making sure it's not right at the bottom of your deck. Yep. Alkalux just has all of the time in the world, though. He can he can just he just wait. There's there's no way that there's no way a dark horse are going to get enough pressure to really threaten. Uh, Arclux here, so yeah. there's just no hurry. Titan Art Gaming's uh, deck list here as well for the Odd Warrior might be hurting them a little bit in this matchup. They've cut some of the more popular cards recently uh, in the form of Cube and Leroy, uh, which right. could be used to get a little bit of extra damage in the mid game to close it out. Because uh, make no mistake, the Odd Warrior is definitely trying to play the aggressive strategy in this matchup just stick a board kill their opponent nice and quickly whilst also gaining up that armor so they don't die too early yeah they have to play as much to the curve as they possibly can um i wouldn't be completely surprised if we saw coin ziliax it feels awful but they just need to play something coin ziliax into faceless yeah, yeah it does feel pretty bad <laughs> The alternative being coins elect since you zola it back and then you can like magnetize onto it. But all these things are like two, three turn plans. And the upside is not really all that high. Okay, that <laughs> there is a win condition available to Titan R Gaming with the Azalina. Yeah. If they can Azalina two naturalizers. Now Understanding the way the Hakar combo works is important for this. So you play the Hakar first, yeah. kill your own Hakar, and the next turn go Tog, Naturalize, Naturalize. But you have yeah. to empty your deck first before you do the Hakar part. So if Arclux goes Hakar, kills the Hakar, shuffles the infected bloods into his own deck, mm. then if YLM just plays Naturalize, Naturalize, he wins. Yes. Uh, which means Arclux kind of has to book to play a Naturalize first. Um, like his plan could be instead to switch away from that and disregard the uh, the Hakar portion of it somewhat and just go for draw his entire deck turbo fast yep. and then go uh, naturalize naturalize togwaggle if his opponent has six or more cards yes yeah that's true which is also a very valid win condition because Arclux is going to hyper draw through his deck in the next couple of turns and even if he doesn't draw through his whole deck before switching decks, does that even matter? His deck is literally just card draw and nothing else. That's fair. So he could... He'll, he'll want to do it a bit, for sure. But at the first opportunity that that YLM has six or more cards in his hand, and Arclux yeah. has the means to swap decks, he'll just do it. I agree. 
you got to seize the opportunity while you can. Like you said, because of the nonsense that Azalina plays with this matchup. So despite what we were saying at the beginning of this game, it is actually a lot more nuanced than it maybe originally seemed. Yeah, it's a lot less like the um, the old school Togwaggle with um, uh, the full twig package and reducing it with the, the florist. Uh, because in that one, you pretty much just drew your whole deck and as long as you didn't get Azalina. As YLM is looking for some reason to go for, I guess, anything other than Faceless Shield Slam on this turn. Like, does he want to draw cards, I guess, is his thinking? It doesn't seem all too bad. Because if you keep the deck sizes even, and develop a big minion in the meanwhile... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the main thing that I'd be thinking about here. It's that Arclux does struggle to deal with a wide board of big minions specifically wow. and that auctioneer had a very nice shape this seems like a significantly slower play this is very interesting indeed i mean i can see the reasoning why he wouldn't want to draw cards because the more cards he draws the more likely he is to have six or more cards in hand for arclux to go double naturalized togwaggle later on in the game um but I guess is he that afraid that he doesn't want to go shield slam or coin copy and then shield slam? It's interesting to say the least, but now Arclux has free reign uh, to go off with his second auction here. Hoping to find, of course, Floop's Glorious Gloop or just any cheap spells here to make sure he can turbo through his whole deck. He's not actually running a Floop's Glorious Gloop. Oh, really? Interesting. You may, when you said that, you made me think, ah, oh, is he? Because I, the few Hakar decks I've seen recently haven't been, but it does feel like it should be in there. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's just a tech decision that maybe has grown a little bit old because it's just too greedy. It's just seen as overkill. But now with the Auctioneer not doing that much work, Arclux does still have quite a few cards left in deck he has to draw through. Uh, which, you know, he will probably be able to do so. Ferocious Howl, Branching Paths, and Wrath are obviously all draw cards able to get that rolling. And most importantly of all, he's under zero pressure at the moment. It's worth pointing out, though, that if Titan R Gaming were to play the Azalina right now, they would not only get the Naturalize, but they'd also get Togwaggle. So Arclux would not be able to manufacture a position where they can swap decks and the decks cannot be sought back because YLM could just play their own Togwaggle after that. Basically, this game's getting quite messy and it's all Azalina's fault. Yeah, it's all getting very weird. And it gets even more complicated than just, you know, playing the... Like you said, he plays the car and then kills it. How he actually does that is a little bit more difficult. Like. Does he have to save a spellstone, I guess, with an innovate? Yeah. So that he can go so he can go tog double naturalize on the next turn. I think that's the uh, I think that's the general game plan, yeah. Yeah. But that play just loses to Azalina. Yeah. Unless of course he does the tog uh, sorry, the Hakar earlier like if he just plays a card now instead yeah, and then draws through his whole deck yes he'll be taking more damage from the corrupted bloods quite possibly a lot of damage but it does mean that he won't be dying to double natural load i think that ends up being better yeah i mean he has to play around iron beak owl yeah so he'd have to obviously have the hakar and have a spell stone ready to go and pre-upgraded very soon Yes, that is the other important facet. It needs to be fully upgraded spellstone. Thing is, in some matchups, you can afford to actually not save a spellstone and just go Hakar Innovate and naturalize your own Hakar. Yeah. And the next turn, Tog Naturalize. But against Odd Warrior, they gain so much armor where that means it, it it's not necessarily going to guarantee the kill. However, although Odd Warriors do generally gain a lot of armor, while 
gained that much armor so far. 46 is very easy uh, for the warrior, for the druid to deal with. Like you said, he might have to go for the, the full OTK version with saving back double naturalize. But mm -hmm. at the moment, that's still very much a possibility. And Arkalux is just really struggling to get anything out of his deck now. He's used up one auctioneer, but his hand's sort of dry. Yeah, it's finally started to dry up. He's still got the other branching paths, I believe. He's got two Acolytes, uh, I think, in his deck as well. Like, all the draw right now is firmly at the bottom of his deck. That's unfortunate. And this means that finally, after all this time, Odd Warrior is able to get a little bit of damage through to face. This board is starting to go in YLM's favor. Yeah, this is insane. And it's also what I was saying earlier when YLM was considering the faceless on the auctioneer. Boards like this are just so difficult for this druid to deal with. Because yeah, Pyromancer yeah. plus Barkskins plus uh, um, Earthen Scales, they can deal with little wide boards. A naturalized and a spellstone can deal with a, with a big minion or two, but it's not nice. Yeah. I still just do question though, the big decision from YLM this game to not be the auctioneer. Yeah. Because the, the benefit of that is very apparent. He has five cards in hand, which is lower than the threshold of six. If he has six or more, he gets hit with double naturalized Togwaggle, and there's no room for the King's Ransom, so the decks are permanently swapped. But he would also have just got, what, a five mana, five nine, was it? A five eight? You can't five, eight, ignore eight, yeah. the basic rules of Hearthstone. That's just a powerful minion to hit <laughs> your opponent with. And again, against a deck which can't deal with big minions. Exactly. If they use an innovate, uh, sorry, if they use a naturalize that early, great. They don't have another combo piece to kill you with. It's games like this that just make me think of, uh, or remind me how strong Azalina is as a card, because uh, specifically in Odd Warrior, she turns quite a few matchups completely on their head. Mm -hmm. Just the inclusion of one card. And now, again, because of Art Clux's play in throwing down auctioneers very willy-nilly, um, the card draw is completely dried up again. And a naturalize has to come down this turn, when, imagine if it had come down last turn instead, if he'd assessed the situation dif differently. It wouldn't be one uh, of these Bakus on the board, it would mm -hmm. be none. Because there wouldn't be a facelet, the faceless wouldn't be able to copy it. This has worked out so much worse. Yep, it also means YLM only needs to worry about uh, having seven cards or less in his hand, not five or less, because mm. there's only one naturalize. So Arclox can only force him to draw two cards before playing Togwaggle. On the flip side, one naturalized being used means that's one less naturalized that YLM can get from the Azalina. True. And obviously it's worth pointing out that the more um, corrupted bloods are in Arclux's deck when he does do the sort, if he can tank the damage, then that's more damage that YLM will be taking when he eventually does the swap as well. Look at Hawklix's face right now with his contempt for his <laughs> hand at the moment. This is pretty miserable. Like It's getting a bit unfortunate with... Now, I think it is still both Acolytes right at the bottom of his deck. He can, I believe, however, upgrade that spellstone now. Like if he were to go just bark skin on one of his opponent's minions. Um, but that's super slow. Like he can't do um, Hakar on the same turn then because he'd have to go Hakar innovate spellstone it to play around the owl. I understand Arclux's frustration. This is not what the deck is supposed to do. He's saying he needs all the cards in his hand. It's actually ridiculous. Look how much damage Baku has done this game. 
Baku the Moon Eater, MVP. But Arclux should have won the game by this point, I feel like. When the, the Odd Warrior is down to 11 cards, her cartridge should have already won. Moon it should have drawn its <laughs> deck long ago. Oh my god. Look at that from Arclux. The absolute worst draws four turns in a row. All right, but yeah. I feel like he could have changed it. He's just got to gain all of the armor that he possibly can this turn and clear as much of this board as he can. Earthen Scales will get him another four armor. Moonfire will allow him to deal with the ooze at least. He doesn't want to cast the Spellstone because he needs that for her car. Yeah. And obviously, while I'm now up to six cards in hand, he knows that the uh, with the one naturalized being gone, he needs to be below eight cards now in order to stop the swap. Okay, with this and with the hero power, Arclux deals with the with the hatchling. It really does not feel great, but like you say, it's the best he's got right now. Okay, just to well, try and stem the bleeding. If one of these acolytes is drawn next turn, Arclux can't really proc it because he needs to save that innovate and he needs to save that spellstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so his hand is completely stranded. Well, he can just go for Hakar Innovate Spellstone next turn, but that's 11 mana do literally <laughs> nothing to the board. And then take 3 damage next turn, likely. Yeah, exactly. I spent the whole of the first half of this game talking about Azalina, but it looks like Wailem doesn't even need Azalina to win this one. And now what does he look for? The uh, Omega Assembly is not perfect because obviously Baku ain't no mech so he can't go for any magnetizing synergy to push extra damage on this turn. So I can respect the Doctor Boom instead. <laughs> it's just the face expressions. I'm loving them this game. Oh. Now the naturalize comes up. So if he swaps, or if he goes to Hakar now, he's just not killing his opponent, right? Yep. He can't go Hakar, Spellstone, and naturalize all in the same turn. He's one mana short for that. And again, YLM has six cards in hand. If Arclux had a second naturalize, he'd be able to swap decks, but he doesn't. Uh, is there any merit whatsoever this game for a tempo tog waggle? Because that do, it, right? like, it forces YLM to spend five mana to switch decks back at some point. But then you've given up your win condition. Like, yeah. You just lose then because you have the rubbish deck. Alright, yep. Arclux is gonna... Right, he's hoping two things here. He's hoping YLM doesn't have three damage and he's hoping that his next draw is not the Corrupted Blood. Because it will just kill him. So mechs that could do the spring rocket, I think, would be exact lethal with the super collider as well. Right. Uh, or he just goes for Azalina, I suppose, is the slightly more likely lethal. Yeah, Azalina, grab the naturalize, use it. Yeah. It'd hit with the back and then use the naturalize. That's yeah. lethal, what, three quarters of the time? Actually, no, because he'd, he'd have to assume the naturalizer. Yeah, he doesn't know the naturalizer's there. Interesting, though, how he did have um, a couple of different avenues to victory there. Didn't choose uh, to take either of them, instead just loading up on the board, which means that Arclux has a turn. He's going to have to make a miracle happen, but he's got a turn. 
And there's the blood. Game over. Oh, right. <laughs> there we go. Well, that didn't quite go to plan for the druids. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I am not um, expert, I would say, enough with the Hikadri to figure out exactly what went wrong there. Um, but I would say it was just not prioritizing draw enough. Like, he got the auctioneer in the opening hand, which is exactly what you want. But he used them both super early. Like, he didn't get the good draws with them. I will totally understand that his cards came in the wrong order. He got no card draw cards when he needed them most desperately. And he got all the expensive spells on the turns where he played auctioneer. But I think you're not in a rush. You don't need to play them as soon as possible. You just need to draw your whole deck with them. And so I think maybe waiting one turn, getting a couple of extra cheap spells, saving that um, uh, biology project as well, which he used for ramp early on, I believe, instead of actually drawing cards off auctioneer. Yeah. I think a couple of things like that, just prioritizing the draw above all else, might have given him a better chance uh, at not being overcome by the pressure. I still do think it's a little bit more complicated than we very originally gave it credit for, simply because of the existence of Azalina. It, it just makes things messy one way or the other. Um, anyways, we're going to have to try and now work out which team has which decks available, because clearly there were some problems earlier. As you see, I believe a, a Sunni fan in chat, uh, one of the more um, popular and well-respected South Korean players, I believe, uh, outside of the, the real star South Korean player on uh, SKT T1 uh, in Surrender, at least in the Western scene, I'm not sure about internally within South Korea. Uh, but it's cool to see some of the fans of the locals out here in Korea, despite the fact uh, that the Koreans are doing pretty miserably so far. Okay, so I did take a little screenshot of the uh, of the picks earlier on, and it looks like they are simply the wrong way around. Oh, okay, right. That's why it was intensely confusing. <laughs> so, um, apologies for that, everyone watching. But I believe what that means. <laughs> 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 oh, take, taking a bit of a risk, risk here. I believe that means Dark Horse. No, sorry, Titan R Gaming. <laughs> you had War two options there, mate. You had literally <laughs> two options. That's Warlock, Paladin, and Shaman remaining. Brilliant. Which is, uh, let's see, the Shaman is the sl is the Peanut Shaman type I deck. I think they've both got Peanut Shaman. Ah, okay, well that makes life a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Paladin was Holy Wrath Paladin. I think actually both teams have Holy Wrath Paladin as well, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, and the Warlock was the double demonic project known for R2 Warlock. Which could be pretty good in this combo heavy meta. Any kind of disruption to your opponent's hand or deck uh, can obviously be very important. Yeah, there's no, there's no like jump out, this is the deck to pick against Odd Warrior, is there? There's no obvious. Yeah. No obvious choice here. Oh, they also have their own warrior available. Um, which is the not odd warrior. It's the Dead Man's Hand Mojo Master Zeki warrior. Right. Maybe that's the pick, actually. We're about to find out. It's the Paladin. Right, sorry, I was just getting the, uh, the deck list up for both teams. So yeah, this is Holy Wrath Paladin. It's a pretty standard Holy Wrath Paladin. Only one copy of Baleful Banker. Only one copy of Holy Wrath, actually. Uh, right. Let me let me peep at this list. So I'm not sure where uh, they're getting the rest right of the too. damage from. Oh yeah, this is a weird version of it. So how many bounce effects have they got in total? One Banker, one Zola. Two Brewmasters. Okay, I I don't mind the two Brewmasters list. Like, I know a lot of people prefer the double banker list. I personally really like the double Brewmaster list because uh, it allows you to get the Uther Horseman OTK ah, rolling uh, a little bit quicker. That's the uh, one condition here. Okay. Yeah, that is 100% what Dark Horse are going to be going for here. Um, the Shavala Holy Wrath OTK rarely gets there against Warrior, so it's going to be turbo drawing your deck, getting through the whole thing, and then trying to win the game through surviving <laughs> first and foremost, it, uh, and then Horseman. It did get there against Sixo yesterday, who well, there you go. somehow ended up playing a Reckless Flurry, which left him on exactly 25 health and dead to the Holy Wrath next turn. I think there was some sort of slip up there. But yes, obviously the main win condition will be the Horseman 
the apocalypse. And so for Titan R Gaming, they're going to want to play as aggressive a game as possible again. Hey, it worked out last time. Yeah, well, aggression is the name of the game for both players, but with on different fronts, it's board uh, control, face damage for the warrior, and it's just aggressive card draw for Sunni. But Christology is mwah, the perfect way to start off this game. The draw engine that Christology allows is so incredibly disgusting. It cannot be overstated how good that card is in a matchup like this, where you are under very little pressure. Yep, Christology and also Prismatic Lens is looking Ooh. like these cards are going to allow Sunni to get through his deck very quickly. Novice Engineer picked up there as well. Okay. Well, Booty Bay Bodyguard is the aggressive pick. <laughs> Could it finally be time? I mean, he's got so many 5 drop. Right? Like... Yeah. Do you still yeah. go for it just because it's deep? Oh, Primordial Drake's so bad at actually pushing damage, but it could be important just to deal with the uh, the small pesky minions uh, that the the OTK Paladin can throw down, which are actually really annoying in this matchup. Dr trying to get through a, uh, a Righteous Protector is not easy. Fairly simple play there for Sunni, uh, just getting cards out of his hand with the Righteous Protector and drawing uh, as much as possible as well. Uh, I will say that this is a pretty miserable use of Righteous Protector, which is a card that could be pretty good later on, uh, just trying to stop a big chunk of damage coming through to face. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess with the amount of card draw that he has in hand at the moment with the, the Prismatic Lens as well, he probably has the liberty in assuming that he won't be under too much pressure before he's able to get that that OTK roll. So Derek, what role do you think Mojo Master Zihi plays in this matchup? Well, I think it can be pretty good after you've got Uther down, <laughs> uh, just to stop your opponent from going for too much pressure playing their big threat. Uh, to be honest, I doubt it will be that impactful in this matchup. Like, it's not the matchup that you put it in for necessarily, I think. Um, but just anything that lets you slow your opponent down is very valuable in this deck. Yep. I guess that's the plan. You play the Uther, you play the Zihi, where all you're really doing is wanting to spend four mana a turn or five mana a turn. You play the hero power, you bounce it back. You play the hero yep. power, you bounce it back. And then eventually when you've got ten mana again, you can just go ahead and win the game. Here we see, as I was saying, all those annoying, lovely uh, to clear up here. But instead, it's slow, but Super Collider could be used to deal with most of them, I guess. Yeah. It really doesn't feel great, because TG uh, really just want to want to get all the damage rolling on the board as they can. Uh, but like we were saying, you've got to deal with those small minions first, as the the Paladin's turns will be slowing down a little bit now. After they've used all their early little threats, uh, the Warrior will have more liberty to start throwing stuff down onto them. As we uh, start to get into the later portion of the game now, YLM is going to have a lot more options available to him. Indeed. Getting down this Diehorn Hatchling seems good. He's then got Boom, Primordial Drake, Baku, as a kind of kind of sad, but also kind of okay curve. Yeah, it's about as good as you're going to get in Old Warrior. Uh, as I want to point out as well, I really like the play there from Sunni of just throwing down the Holy Wrath. Great recognition of what your win condition is in this matchup. Uh, it's not a particularly impressive play, but just indicates he clearly knows what he's doing in this matchup. Yep. 
That said, <laughs> by playing the Holy Wrath. Oh, oh my God! It's too many. <laughs> by playing the Holy Wrath, he said to YLM, "Your health total doesn't matter anymore." So he doesn't necessarily need to worry about getting himself above 25 health. That's fair. And maybe there was some world where Sunni could get a big board of Shivalas down. Uh, but I think both of these players are intelligent enough to know that YLM's health never really mattered this game. Right. Like, his removal is too strong to let Sunni stick any kind of... But while Sunni's early turns have been pretty dreamlike with the Christology, the Prismatic Lens, nice clear board, lots of card draw. Um, it's going to start slowing down a little bit now. No card draw left in hand outside of the Flash of Light, and no Uther in sight, very mm. importantly. Uh, as soon as he does find Uther, he's in a very good position with two bouncers and a banker, which is kind of a, ba uh, a bouncer once you've drawn your whole deck. Uh, he can get that four horseman OTK rolling very quickly indeed, but that Uther is absolutely crucial he's still got 14 cards remaining running out of card draw this early is quite unfortunate there's not even that much more in the deck is there well there's the flash of lights i guess yeah it's definitely starting to slow down though but that's not too much of a problem again because it's this version of the list, uh, which runs the two Brewmasters, drawing through the whole deck is not crucial to your uh -huh. condition. Just need to find Uther. Prismatic Lens is great card draw, but can't actually draw Uther because it draws a minion and a spell. Uther's a hero card, doesn't count as a minion or a spell. Which isn't necessarily bad, because while you don't have Shivala, you obviously don't want to swap the Uther up to 25 mana uh, or anything scary like that. That's perfectly fine though for Sunni. A little bit of extra card draw just to make sure this keeps on rolling. Dark Horse are not playing Lanessa, uh, so there's no difference as to whether you target the face or a minion there. Uh, in terms of the extra draw that Lanessa could give you if yep. you targeted a minion with the Flash of Light. Um, but it is still, once again, looking a lot nicer here for Sunni with another Christology, another Flash of Light. The card draw is not slowing down at all, contrary to how it went last game for them uh, with the Druid, where they just ran completely dry. And there it is, There's before it. it's even needed on curve, the all-important Death Knight. To pretty much be the final nail in the coffin for one. I was going to counter your point about Christology and say, actually, how many more one attack minions are left in the deck? And we we're about to find out. I'm not even convinced there's two more. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't even need both of them, right? I think he's yeah. burning one here. Um, yeah, just because you don't need it. I actually next, quite like this. Next turn, though, Uther going to come straight down. And YLM very much on the clock here. This is a play you see uh, a lot with the, the real pros at this deck. The OTK Paladin is playing Prismatic Lens or Christology while they are at 10 cards in hand just to burn one because they know, like you said, they mm -hmm. can't burn Uther with it. Let's just get rid of it. I don't care about these cards in my deck. I just need to find the bounce. Yeah, and with Christology, that seems very appropriate. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's just more cantrips for the most part. Pretty much. Sunni is running low on board clears now. However, with Shavala the Tiger there, uh, he's going to be able to control anything that YLM can throw at him quite easily. Along with the weapon from Uther. Yeah, I mean... Oh, it feels bad, but at the moment, this is just one of those matchups where the warrior is just really struggling to find anything to do. 
the Paladin's got everything it could ever dream of at the moment. Even, uh, I suppose it doesn't have a board clear right now, uh, but with two equalities left in the deck, it's only, oh sorry, one equality left in the deck, it's only going to be so far away uh, from finding that board clear for a large board like this. If it even needs it. And there it is, the second Brewmaster as well, so doubles Brewmaster and Zola. It means pretty much the only thing standing in Sunni's way here is the very sad factor of RNG, which could mess with him. I'm of course talking about luck, not the team RNG <laughs> uh, in this tournament. And because I'm, if he does I'm... roll the same horseman over and over again, things could get a little bit messy. And I really do hate that about this deck. Me too. Um... I haven't played this deck all that much, and one of the reasons for that is one of the first times I felt like I had a guaranteed win. I did, I think, get the same horseman three times in a row. Yeah. And lost the game as a result. YLM here does, however, make a pretty strong play onto the board. Like I said, that, uh, okay, that equality clear is not in <laughs> hand quite yet, although Sunni here is quite uh, quickly proving me wrong. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate though that the, the difference now in the nerf means that you can't go Hero Power, Brewmaster, and Equality Consecrate. Uh, but no matter what, there is the board clear available to me if he wanted to take it. It's actually not that common that Holy Earth Paladin runs two copies of Equality now. Um, often they're running one copy of Shrink Ray instead of the second yeah. Equality. Which would probably be better here. Like, you just play Shrink Ray. Leave them as one ones and then go here. Bam. Shankrai is only one mana more expensive, but a lot better of a card now. Interesting okay, that Sunni feels he has to Zola the Shivala there. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand the reasoning because he has effectively four bounce effects in the form of Baleful Banker, two Brewmasters, and Zola, whereas mm -hmm. he only needs three in order to get the three necessary horsemen uh, and the one from the Hero Power on that turn to do the OTK. So he still has the full OTK very much active after he draws this um, horseman from his deck. And it just gives him a bit more survivability. Like, having another uh, Shivala in hand is really nice just to fend off the aggression. It has to be said though, YLM's aggression is very powerful at the moment. Yes, the equality consecration is there to deal with this. Um, that but turn... Sorry, go ahead. No, go on. I was just going to say that turn felt like a weird way to go about it though. Like, he's obviously afraid of an equality consecrate board clear, but. Did... What's he saving the faceless for? Like, right. yeah. if an equality consecrate does come down, or an equality pyro. There's nothing on board to copy, and he has no powerful five mana minions. Like copying Ziliax, who cares? There's a three two that soon he just doesn't really care about. Maybe he's thinking Mer the Brilliant Nullifier faces that faceless Shivala at some point. It's slow though. That's what I was thinking. Like copy the Shivala on that turn. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. And then just shield slam it away. Like it's looking so unlikely for Wild ah. at this point. I get that that play is incredibly weak to an equality board clear. But YLM has to take some really big risks here mm. if he's going to have any chance of winning this game at all. He found his big five mana minion, though. He did indeed. So, potentially this turn, Shield Slam, Brilliant Nullifier, or Shield Slam, 
dynamatic. That's true. And then next turn, two big five jobs. But he's running out of time. He could go... Reckless Flurry, Brilliant Nullifier, or Diehorn Hero Power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better than the Shield Slam. Getting the Brilliant Nullifier on board is pretty good just because it's a minion that can be magnetized with Viliax. Yeah, and then copied with Faceless. Yeah, good point. Whoa, going with the skates work here. I think this pretty clearly lays out his plan, uh, which is to go for some kind of a big uh, minion copying play. Uh, and going for magnetize as well. But the quality and pyromancer are both present in Sunni's hand. Not that he feels like he needs it yet. He gets the same horseman there that he already has in his hand. So if I recall correctly, he shuffled one horseman into his deck and he has this one in his hand. Yes. So he needs... Yeah, so this is the wrong one. This is not needs... what he wanted. He missed the 50-50. Yes. Well, the 50-50 for the game, pretty much. Like, he's obviously far from out, but mm -hmm. now YLM ha still has a chance. Clearing off this minion, while it may not seem all too important uh, for Sunni, uh, it could be a pretty big deal as well. Uh, obviously, uh, the Zilliax faceless combo, given that it would have Divine Shield, might make it a little bit difficult for Sunni to clear. Uh, but even having said that, Pyromancer, Flash of Light, Equality clears up any board, even with Divine Shields thrown in there as well. I'm staring at Azelina trying to work out if she does something this game. I don't think she does. I don't think it does, right? Because you get you can get maximum three horsemen, even with the dream, and then you mm -hmm. still lose because you can't generate one with your hero power. Yep. Less. You get Mojo Master, which stops the combo for a couple of turns. I guess is the best outcome. <sighs> it's still not good, though, is it? It's not great. It's it's all just too slow. Like we are searching for any kind of a way that YLM uh, is able to pull this one back, and it involves a lot of missed coin flips for Sunni on the uh, the horseman, getting the wrong one like three turns in a row, and also pushing a lot of damage that Sunni cannot clear. And while I I can respect this play from YLM because it makes a big board with a Divine Shield, which is harder for Sunni to clear off with an Equality board. I kind of suspect that maybe he should have gone all in even earlier. Because in right. that instance, he's still weak to Equality, but his opponent is less likely to have it, and he puts an even more threatening board into play. Yep. I agree. And that's another miss! <laughs> Sunni feels how I felt the one time I played this deck. Yeah, pretty much. Slight exaggeration. Obviously, there is still the uh, the board clear potential for Sunni very much available. Yep. Uh, but he looks like he's saying, this is not enough. I want even more stuff to be destroyed with this one final hurrah of a pyro quality. Yep. Well, he's got the two timeouts, one still remaining in his deck, oh, I believe. Oh, this So, um, may as well use it. This can only go wrong so many times. <laughs> I mean, it can go wrong an infinite number of shh, if we're being shh, technical shh. about it. <laughs> but yes, I agree. He will get the right horseman event. Need to get Lorinda in here, find out just how unlucky you'd have to be. Yeah. It's got to come sooner or later. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. Regardless, he's got another turn with the um, timeout. He's got the pyromancer quality clear. That gives him at least another turn after that. He's probably got a turn or two after that as well, just because YLM is not going to have a board. Yeah. 
like, does he need to make the gamble that... Actually, no, he knows that there is no way that there's not a board clear next turn because he knows that there's a flash of light in hand. He doesn't know it costs one, but that doesn't make any difference. He knows that his opponent could go... Either his opponent has equality as the last card and has flash of light in hand, or he already has equality in hand. Mm -hmm. There's always a way to completely clear the board here if Wylem has been keeping track. But like, I, I don't know if he... Ugh. It, it doesn't matter. He knows he just has to close his eyes, hope he's made a... Right. Stoony hands together in prayer, saying, all right, this is the horseman. <laughs> it is the horseman. That's the one. That is one of the two. Yeah. So now Stoony, as long as he does not die on this turn, which I think is pretty much impossible, he can just play timeout. He's won the game on this turn, and finally, this farce of a game can end. Okay, surely YLM knows to concede now. <laughs> I was like, come on! <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? There's three horsemen in Suni's hand. <laughs> three different horsemen. No, no, maybe I can find a mech that's going to uh, get me out of this. A taunt? No? Okay. There we go. Try as he might, YLM finds absolutamente nada, which means it is going to be on Titan R Gaming to find a counter for this OTK Palazin, which I think shouldn't be too difficult. It does have some very strong counters, given that it is a, a strong OTK deck. Not very often you actually get to see these animations play out. And then when you do, you realize it should be way cooler. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Suni takes the first win for Korea this series. Yeah, very nice win there for Dark Horse. Expected, but this is last series standing. You do very often end up with those super polarized matchups. Uh, and now looking at uh, Titan R Gaming, I believe they have some actually pretty strong matchups uh, up against this OTK Holy Wrath Paladin. In my opinion, one of the strongest ones being. Uh, the Mechathune Warlock. I think even though they are both yeah. strict OTK decks, pretty much every time the OTK Mechathune Warlock gets to the combo quicker. It just draws faster. Yep, Mechathune Warlock is actually astonishingly fast at getting to its win condition. It's insane. I, I saw a game yesterday, I think it was with Kalento where he was basically there but didn't actually have the mana yet to do the Mechathune combo because right. he'd drawn his entire deck before turn 10. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this is why I like it so much. I liked it more uh, a little while ago when OTK Paladin was more popular because it was, in my opinion, such a free win for the Warlock. Um, now I, c I think it still has its spot with a lot of priests on ladder it can start to struggle from the damage they're delivering uh, but again it just draws so quickly through to its combo that against all but the most aggressive decks it can do some pretty disgusting stuff. let's try and work out what titan art gaming's other choices are uh, so the mechathun warlock the mage they do have the aggro mage available to them still i think despite the fact we've been very uh confused about this throughout <laughs> the series so far i believe they have their mage left which um, is the aggro mage yes okay yeah. alongside the malagos druid which could pop up later and their peanut shaman i think they've probably got a few decent matchups like the malagos druid the fact that it still gains a whole bunch of armor still got the branching paths ferocious how malfury and all that goodness uh means that the holy wrath otk probably isn't going to work for me just not going to get enough damage which means they have to go for the uther horseman otk which is a very slow otk to go for maybe in that instance the malagos druid can get to their own win condition before the horsemen even get close uh yeah that does seem right like the paladin gets there fast 
but not that fast. Like, we did see towards the middle of that game, there was a very slow spell. And then Prismatic Lenses were drawn and Christologies, and they did make yeah. it the rest of the way quite quickly. But it can it can run quite slow, which is why, again, going back to the Mega Thing Warlock quickly, that seems like such a good counter, because that deck can't slow down. You can tap every single turn. Yeah, it just so consistently gets through to that OTK. The, uh, the downside is that its survivability on the way, I would say, is a little bit less. It doesn't have such powerful board clears. It doesn't have quite so much healing. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm just a huge fan of the Mechathun Warlock. But I think it's a very... In the background, it looks like the players are just about getting ready to start their next game. And it's going to be the... I think this is the Agro Mage. Interesting. Okay. The this Agri is not the deck that I was expecting to be used. Uh, I have to be perfectly honest. I was thinking one of the more combo -y oriented decks would be the one opted in for instead. The Paladin is so is quite defensive, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Flash of Lights, Pyromancers, Timeouts being key cards there. Um, but I guess Titan R Gaming just believe that they can get their aggression from the Mage deck, the Spell Zerkers, the Anomalies, the Lunar down quickly enough to uh, yeah. just beat the Paladin down. I think the real game plan is to stick minions super early on. Because mm -hmm. even though they have the True Silver to deal with them around turn 4, if you can get them down on turn 2, turn 3... Their ability to deal with your minions is basically non-existent. They have nothing to deal with an early fledgling, an early lunar. So that is, I think, what uh, Titan are going to be trying to do above all else. Just to smoke them out of the game in the really early game. So, potentially a full mull here from Titan are Gaming then. As simply no minions present. It's looking that way. Uh, could be keeping the Frostbolt, I guess, to deal with early minions. But even then, it's like Divine Shield minions. Hangor and Righteous Protector that they're likely to be running into. So like you said, any minions, I think, is much more worth it. So. Crystal Smith Kangor is going to be very strong for Sunni this game, though. Uh, given the sheer amounts of healing that card can come out with. Whether it wants to be played early on turn 2 or whether it wants to be held back and later played with maybe Flash Heals and Shavala is another question. And Sunni decides, yep, I want it later. Yeah, I think I can get on board with this. It, it, against aggro decks, I agree. It's an annoying minion. It gets a lot of healing. But against aggro mage in particular, they have so many spells that can deny it from getting any lifesteal at all. Uh, so I think I like the other route that they're going for. Just... Looking for slightly better minions in the early game, like this Righteous Protect. Done. Speaking of the starts, the Accelerator was looking for, this is exactly it. He accelerates the game very quickly indeed. But Sunni is not looking at all too bad of a hand himself. The pickup of Christology is so big here just to keep that card draw rolling yep. and look Righteous. for those answers to this board. Righteous Protector from the Christology is looking insane. Um, but yeah, I mean, Accelerator, like you said, this is almost a full hand of minions, or as much of a minion-heavy hand as you can expect from Aggro Mage. Oh, yes. It's looking like the uh, the Luna could be difficult to deal with early on, getting himself a bunch of card draw. If he can find himself a Kirintor Mage here with this hand, he is going to be... Flying into the Wow. Missiles looks pretty much perfect for the situation. Maybe he'd prefer a Cinder Storm if we're being really picky. But Accelerator. I guess he could just go missiles ping this turn, try and clear everything and push forward to the face. Doesn't feel perfect though. Like if no. he gets perfect missile RNG, then it's pretty good. But if he goes for Luna, then that's potentially almost a full board clear in the face of uh, an equality, uh, a consecration. Sorry. In fact, it would be a full clear in the face of a consecration. Mm. Yeah, which is I think the one thing holding him back. 
Otherwise, Lunar is so good on me. All right. Almost perfect missiles. Pretty good. And you can trade in the, the weaker minion yeah. uh, if he wants to to play around Consecration, which I think is probably the way to go. Man, both of these players are drawing pretty close to the perfect hands uh, for both the minion development for Sunni early on, followed up by the True Silk. He's got healing, he's got removal with the mm -hmm. Pyromancer, but Accelerator has loads of minions, loads of pressure. If he can just get any way to stick these on the board for a turn, he's going to be in a great spot. That's the issue, though, that the True Silver Champion now has mm. for Accelerator is that it shuts down any minion he can play this turn. So maybe you just throw something in as a, a lamb to the slaughter in order to protect Luna or Cosmic Anomaly next turn. Uh, I'm looking at Sorcerer's Apprentice plus Secret on this turn. Yes, that looks like the most efficient play. He doesn't really want to throw any of these minions out, but yeah, you're... he doesn't have a choice. So only one spell present in Sunni's hand, that's the Flash Heal. That's not looking like it's going to be played anytime soon, thanks to the Counterspell on board and Counterspell in Accelerator's hand. Though Sunni doesn't know which of the two secrets that is. Yeah, and that does make his play a little bit messy because he can't go for something like, uh, well, Pyro Flash of Light never does the full job because he knows it's either Counterspell or uh, the Explosive Runes. And now he's figured it out. He knows what he's dealing with now. And it's really not that bad, I think, for the moment. Like, the Flash of Light, he doesn't need uh, to proc the Count spell now. He can just wait. Develop minions instead. And there you go. So he takes the bait. Destroys the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Now, Accelerator can somewhat safely play one of his other two minions and Suni is going to struggle to deal with it whichever one he goes with which now it's looking like that Luna is going to be stuck on the board though finally for Accelerator yep. Luna plus um, Shooting Star just clears the board thanks to the counter spell prevents Suni from dealing with it in any way Oh, he's going for the Cosmic Anomaly instead. He's really thinking about it. I'm not sure if I like this, because I, I kind of feel like Luna is arguably less valuable now that the, uh, the Alunith is in hand. Yep. Like, this obviously gets more damage onto the board, which is really not to be overstated. But there's literally nothing in hand that synergizes with spell damage right now. Uh, it's guess, it's more attack power. Yeah, it's just more mana efficient as well. Suni doesn't seem to have a way of dealing with it though. He can go Pyromancer, and then play mm -hmm. two spells. The first spell will be prevented by the counter spell. Yeah, I guess maybe I'm focusing too much on the uh, the cards that Accelerator has in hand rather than what's in his deck. Like if he draws any cheap spell here and he keeps this anomaly on board, he can just go Luna and pop off. Oh, it still has to be tempting to play Luna and Sorcerer's Apprentice and see what he gets. No. Oh, this way he can play a secret as well. He can go Sorcerer's Apprentice, ping, counterspell, and once again, protect yeah, this okay. anomaly. Job done. And now next turn, Luna's even more likely to pop off. And even if, for example, Suni were to pick up a Consecration, obviously that's not 
Wow, okay. Obviously, that's not ideal for Accelerator. I'm on fire today. It does deny a flash of light going to face, which means now eight damage has been negated by these counter spells, which, I mean, job right. done. That's perfectly good for the counter spells to have done. All right, there's the Kirin Maze you talked about about five turns ago. <laughs> that uh, it seems as good as any time. I quite agree. Suni will know that this is a explosive runes though. It makes his life slightly easier. It's still not obvious what he plays in response to it though. Does he really want to take more damage by playing one of these small minions? He doesn't really want to play Mojo Master Z either. Mm. Yeah, he just needs to find some way to clear the board and accelerate his game plan here of being very reserved Minions playing them out piece by piece, getting the counter spells in play to protect against removal means that Suni's card draw has been cut drastically by the two flash of lights being counter spelled, and it means because of that, the removal has been very difficult to find. Can I play a quality in my odd paladin now? No, that's okay. exactly why they didn't put it to three mana because that would make <laughs> me vomit. That's a big hit on the Kangor as well. Popping that Divine Shield means that Accelerator only needs to trade into it once, which means the life steal only goes off once. I, mean, I wouldn't be too surprised if TG Accelerator, TG Accelerator just looks for lethal now. I guess it's a little bit unlikely, but he's so close, man, if he picks up a Fireball. Yeah, uh, fireball arcane missiles from the. Just does it. <laughs> like if that Kangle wasn't there, I think he'd be much more in enticed to go for the Aluneth now, mm -hmm. just to get the draw rolling for next turn. But like you said, he really wants to find a spell to stop any kind of healing coming in from that uh, life steal. So which direction does the Frostbolt go? Does it go face or does it go Kangor? If it goes face, maybe he can somehow find lethal. If it goes Kangor, he gets more damage in the long run because he denies the double lifesteal. Yeah. I mean, what? If he sends Frostbolt face, it does four damage, but heals for two. So like, it's the same amount of damage going face, I think, isn't it? Uh, and it doesn't freeze in the case of Uther. Ooh. Um, or it does more even, yeah. So I think I think this is definitely the way to go. As whoa, Like you said, that Cinderstorm is exactly what he was looking for here. Is Uther even enough to save Suni now? He would heal for oh, 10. He heals for 10. So Rondine it would technically would save him. Yeah. Who's being picked up though does mean the card draw accelerator is potentially limited if Suni can find himself in a stabilizing situation. That's a big if at the moment, as the aggression That's... isn't going to stop anytime soon. I don't think yeah. it's Aluneth's turn next turn. It's going to be Intellect, Spellzerker, and any damage Accelerator can pull out. So if Uther is played and hits the Vicious Fledgling, Suni ends up with 11 health, and there's 6 damage on the board, 7 with the ping. <sighs> Definitely possible for Accelerator to find lethal. But the pyro quality is tempting here as well, though, man. It is. He could just say, okay, I'm dead for one turn. Whatever. I'll heal up out of next wow. turn. I'm going to take the risk right now. <sighs> this is a very brave play indeed. I'm pretty sure most of Accelerator's deck. Well, not most of his deck, but enough of his deck kills Suni now yeah, for this to work very out. Large, That'll do it. But with the intellect, with two more draws, with fireballs still in the deck, frostbolt, uh, I think another cinderstorm, another missiles. There were a lot of ways for accelerator to get there. Nice pick there by Titan R Gaming. A nice play from Accelerator, just to get that paladin out of the way. It was not the the deck I would expect to be used to counter the paladin, but it did a perfectly good job. I think really exploiting the weakness in OTK paladin now, which is lack of board clear. It just doesn't come quickly enough. 
Uh, against the likes of Odd Warrior, a full mana equality is fine. It doesn't make too much difference. You're still clearing off their stuff when it matters, and you're still getting through to the OTK. But against Mage, what are you going to do? Equality, Consecrate on turn 8? You're dead by then every time. And now Dark Horse find themselves on their final deck, and it's going to be either... Here we go again. Now they, they've got their Dead Man's Hand Warrior, <laughs> uh, or they've got their Peanut Shaman, or they've got their Demonic Project Warlock. Okay. So Peanut Shaman is looking like the obvious anti-aggro, as you were saying earlier, pick, I guess, for the mage. Yeah, I would definitely anticipate a, um, the Peanut Shaman to come down throughout the entire run of playoffs for Viper. It was just looking like it destroyed all the aggro decks. Um, Mage is a little bit different because it doesn't play that many minions you have to remove. Mm -hmm. So the likes of, obviously, Volcano, Hagatha, Lightning Storm, all that good stuff is a little bit less necessary. Uh, but the tricks that you can pull with this deck through the use of Electra Storm Surge and Zentimo with cards like Tidal Surge yep. means the amount of healing you can get is absolutely absurd. To be fair though, uh, Titan R Gaming's Mage is very minion heavy. Archaeologists, Sorcerer's Apprentices, Berserkers, Kirin Tor Mages, Luna, Vicious Fledgling, and Cosmic Anomaly. Like, Fledgling is a two of. That's not that common in Agro Mage. Yeah. Dead Man's Hand Warrior is another deck to consider, I guess. It's not as worthy a counter as the Odd Warrior would be. But, you know, shield blocks, Dr. Boom is in the deck. Yeah, I think from Dark Horse, oh. the, the fact that it's so armor gain light would deter them from playing it. Well, it's going to be the Warlock by the looks of things. Now, this is Control Warlock. Yeah, pretty straight up. And like I said, double Demonic Project, double Gnome Feratu. And while double Demonic Project is not... Uh, obviously, this is not the matchup you want it for. It doesn't necessarily have to be a dead card at all. Uh, if you feel like they're saving back on one of the key minions like Luna or Cosmic Anomaly, uh, that could just deal with that instantly and give them some complete rubbish instead. Okay. Here we go. Potentially... One game away here from Dark Horse taking, uh, what would that be, the, the fifth game in a row uh, for the Chinese side. Fifth series in a row. Panicked then because I uh, the stream was showing us offline for me, but it's fine. It's You're fine. all good? Don't, don't panic. We're all good. <laughs> I, we I was not. I was. As the Warlock's hand here is looking pretty spicy, uh, Skull plus Stonehill Defender is uh, a somewhat subtle but very strong synergy, I think, in the form of discovering Void Lord and then sculling that Void Lord into play. Um, I think this is a really nice mulligan uh, from the Warlock. Reasonable opening hand from Accelerator as well. Both two, uh, mm -hmm. two, two drops available. He'll draw another secret, so two secrets available come turn three. And Cosmic Anomaly uh, sort of fills out that curve. Yeah, this is looking pretty nice indeed for Accelerator. It means if Fluff focuses on his own game to unreactively, uh, then Accelerator can punish that with this hand. If he picks up one more spell damage card, or sorry, a spell that synergizes with spell damage, like another missiles, a cinder storm, a frostbolt. This is a very large amount of damage going towards Buff. And really, not much he can do about it. No removal present in Buff's hand at the moment. Mulliganing away the defile. While I agree with it, it does mean that any chance of clearing this ball is much more limited. Hellfire could be huge, but there are two counter spells in Accelerator's hand. So the and first counter spell prevents the coin Hellfire. Yeah. The second counter spell will prevent the Hellfire from being played next turn. 
It's one of those rare situations where you don't mind your counter spell hitting the coin. And so because of that, Fluff is thinking, okay, if it's not counter spell and I go coin hellfire, that's the dream. That's what he wants to happen. If he goes for Stonehill and it's explosive runes, that's really bad for him. But if he goes for Stonehill and it's counter spell, that's pretty good for him. I mean, it's, it's just a straight up guess, right? Like he just has to guess what he think his opponent would be more likely to play. And I guess they'd be more likely to play counter spell. And so because of that, he throws away the demonic project. It's saving back the coin, which I can quite honestly respect. Yep. Now there's no way to prevent the coin hellfire next turn. For accelerator. Which makes this turn a lot more difficult. Like he'd love to just drop down cosmic anomaly this turn and say, yep, you can't deal with it. I guess he could play Spellzerk of Ping just to bait out the Hellfire and then follow up with Cosmic Anomaly. Seems pretty fancy, I think. Well, he'd get next turn, he'd get Cosmic Anomaly and Arcane Missiles on the same turn. It's true. Are you, are you suggesting, sorry, he should ping the uh, his own Spellzerk? No, no, I'm, I'm yeah. suggesting he pings his opponent's face. And just <laughs> right, right, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I can understand that. And while F-U-F, or Fuff, I'm not entirely sure as how we're supposed to pronounce his name, will realize it is more likely for it to be an explosive runes at this point. Uh, oh no, sorry, it will be equally as likely with one explosive runes in the deck list with Titan on Gaming. Uh, I think you will realize it's much more devastating uh, if it's a Hellfire, uh, if it's a counter spell, and therefore Coin Hellfire is probably what I envisage on this turn. Just because if he goes coin and it's not counter spell, then would skull even be better than hellfire for him here? Look at look at Fuff's face. He's clearly deeply struggling with this turn. Mm. He looked very relieved there. I think when the counter spell went off. Yeah, I I'm not sure what he was worried about. Sense. Well, if he goes for coin hellfire and it's explosive runes, then he's just wasted a coin. Which was pretty awful. Sure, okay. Either way, now Accelerator is free to go Spell Zerker, Ping the Spell Zerker and Arcane Missiles, or Cosmic Anomaly and Arcane Missiles. Or if he wants to be really greedy, he could play the Spell Zerker, Ping it, and wait until next turn, and then go Anomaly Arcane Missiles for even more damage. I mean, you should just play Arcane Anomaly, right? Like... Oh, okay, yeah, if he wants to fit in the secret as well. But I was going to say, if he just wants to play one minion... Uh, then just go for the uh, the cosmic and the more damage on. Yeah, sure. Frustratingly, he'll be one mana short to ping his spell Zerka and play anomaly and play missiles next turn. Yeah. Boo hoo. <laughs> As this game is still just incredibly close, Fuff has taken a huge amount of damage early on uh, with the help of taps. Uh, as well as those minions pressuring face turn after turn. But Accelerator's hand is looking very dry indeed. Accelerator seems a lot more composed than Fuff does. We've seen a, a roller coaster of emotions from Fuff this game. <laughs> okay. Down to 14 now. Frostbolt picked up. So There's a big draw indeed. Ping the spell Zerka, Frostbolt Missiles is an option. And then probably just, go on. I think I prefer just developing on this turn, right? Like, you get a plus two spell damage missiles out of that, but you're going to get a plus two spell damage missiles at some point, no matter what. Mm -hmm. But you might get a plus four or even plus six spell damage That's if true. your opponent doesn't have any removal. So, how are you developing? Are you just playing Cosmic Anomaly? You just go Frostbolt Anomaly. Oh, sure, sure. It's weak to second Hellfire exactly. Yep. 
I guess he could go anom uh, missiles on this turn instead of the Frostbolt at all. Like, just go anomaly missiles and hope to get kind of not super unlucky. Just gonna go the missiles? Oh, he's only got five. That is brave. Oh, Accelerator doesn't look happy. I think that's a miss. It's a miss. Fuff literally well, prayed for that outcome and got it. The worst possible outcome there. <laughs> uh, I guess apart from all five missiles face might have been worse. There's the Hellfire as well. Ooh, okay. Accelerator oh, is so close. He's so close, man. That's five damage, five damage. Obviously, the gnome for R2 in a way makes it a little bit more awkward, but a lot of damage that can come through in the next few turns. Healing is looking more and more important. I don't think for, uh, I don't think Accelerator's drawn a fireball yet. No. So even with that Shroom Brew, a fireball is going to be lethal next turn. And he is just launching everything at face, all in on this game plan. they trying to close the game out through lethal damage. Oh. So, okay, so now Fuff can heal and put it. Well, he could already. He could heal and put a taunt in the way. Put himself up to eight. He can't deal with the anomaly, so Fireball's still lethal. Yeah, very, very important that that anomaly stays alive here for Accelerator because it means card draw, spell damage, any kind of card. The vast majority of cards he now are very good indeed. He needs to find it now. Because although it may look a fair way away for Fuff right now, that Gul'dan is creeping ever closer to pretty much just lock out the game. That's not, oh no. It's like the worst draw in the deck, or one of them. There's yeah. quite a few bad draws. Too I mean, bad. I guess there were a few bad draws. Uh, but still, he can put himself in a position where Fireball is still an out. And Fluff there celebrating, like you said, real roller coaster of emotion here. <laughs> realizing he's still in this game. He can pull this back. Two more turns until Gul'dan really makes his life a lot easier. Now he goes Stonehill plus Skull and trades into the Cosmic Anomaly. Brought an Apple Bomb is more health if oh, it dies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, Primordial Glyph. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see Fuff's reaction to this one. Yeah. Have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Meteor would mean the Apple, the apple Bomb dies. It would mean yep. he can go face with the Fledgling. Which is pretty important. It does mean that no matter what, Fuff is still alive on this yep. turn. Even with Wind Fury, he can survive at 1 HP. It would be a little bit more because of the healing from the Apple Bomb. But, oh, right, uh, of course. Sorry, yeah, yeah. It's still close, though. It's still much closer than he would be comfortable. Actually, if Accelerator doesn't get the Wind Fury, then... So he's considering leaving the Apple Bomb alive. Because if he doesn't get the Wind Fury, I think the Apple Bomb heals for four. Fledgling would be dealing three. So Fuff would be on eight. Oh, right. And Fireball wouldn't be lethal. So it oh. might just be better for Accelerator to leave the Apple Bomb alive, not let him get the heal off of it, and then top deck Fireball for lethal next turn. Because Gul'dan... Uh, sorry, Void Lord comes down next turn the vast majority of the time. Yep. And so it doesn't matter that this Vicious Fledgling gets Wind Fury. This is a really smart play. I like this a lot. He realizes that Void Lord is by far the most likely play on this turn. Okay, Defile would just heal Fuff back to 10. Twisting Nether would have done the same thing, actually. Yeah. But he can Defile, he can put up the Meshuggah. I mean, he can Taunt now, yeah, which is pretty important just to get some board control. That was a really long death sound, wasn't it? It was indeed quite gruesome. 
Dungeon Alpha Accelerator. Glyph into Pyroblast is obviously his main oh. out at the moment. That's not bad either. So the problem with Gul'dan is that it's not actually summoning anything next turn. There's the fireball. Is, is it like I can't think of anything relevant Gul'dan summoning. No, I think Gul'dan simply heals 5th to 15. Yeah. So it's going to have to be the Twisting Nether. The Accelerator still has an out for lethal here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whew. That One that matter off. One mana and one, one damage off, off lethal. If he got the Cinderstorm, he would have been able to do it, but that is one mana off lethal. But it means if he if he uses even just one of the spells and a ping here, then Gul'dan heals 5th to 5, and there's still more lethal outs in the deck. Yeah. So I think just 5 will ping, put 5th down to 3, he heals back up to 8, and then pretty much any card with Frostbolt would be lethal after that. Yeah, he doesn't want to play any minions in case of Bellstone off the top. Spellstone off the top would only heal for three, but yes, that's still bad. Yeah. Because I think you can pretty much realize none of these minions base ever. I would have thought Fireball ping is better than Frostbolt ping that turn. Just simply more mana efficient. Yeah, me too. I'm thinking about spell damage stuff, but yeah, I agree. As there we go, Gul'dan, the card that Accelerated did not want to see. His play <laughs> of not playing the Kirintor Mage does kind of punish that. Accelerator can still get there. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Fafen's up in 14 next turn. So, I think Accelerator... So close, man. Again, I think I prefer the Fireball to the ping here because he's going to want all of the mana to play the rest of the burn spells he draws. Oh, really? I don't think he doesn't have that many burn spells, right? Like, if you assume most of his uh, the cards he draws won't be very good, they'll just be minions. There's a Cinder Storm or two? I think it's two Cinder Storms left in the deck. That's, I mean, that's big. But I yeah. guess you can play both of those and the Fireball next turn. Yeah, exactly. Cinder Storms become much, much worse once Fifth starts playing minions. But I mean, hey, imagine if he'd used the Fireball last turn and then could have gone Frostbolt Ping on this turn. Yeah. It would have just been better. Just one mana better. Yeah. Yeah, just missed Sorry, one damage more. Oh my goodness, Primordial Glyph. Oh my god! <laughs> Ziliax, there are no minions in play that Ziliax can attack into. Alright. Let's find out what the Glyph gets. <laughs> oh, okay. Dude, I think so close. I think Fifth might have a heart attack this game. <laughs> <laughs> the paramedics ready? <laughs> I think I might have a heart attack this game. Shooting star just deals one damage to the minion, so it's one less damage for missiles to go into. I mean, I guess you may as well take. Um, uh, arcane explosion because it's the exact same thing but better. Yeah. With the mana reduction. Yep. This has been so close for Accelerator. His cards just. If that Cinderstorm was one draw earlier, if that Fireball was a couple draws earlier. So close, man. He'd have gotten there. But even then, he can't really complain about his card draw. Like, he's had amazing draws. Hoping to draw his lethal on the following turn. Spazerka helps. But now by playing this fledgling onto the board, he's given Ziliax heal. Yeah. I think it's just getting a bit sloppy from Accelerator. Like, choose whether you're playing minions or not, because if he is playing minions this game, he should have already played the Kirin Tom. Yeah, Accelerator obviously realized that was a big mistake. Yeah, I don't really know what that was. Hmm. 
deal with the life steal, I guess. We should go for Spellzerker self thing. Right. I think so too. There's there's no reason yeah. to hold off on it anymore. Well, unless he still doesn't want to, unless he wants to go back to not playing minions because he's afraid of stone. But I'm in most cases, really sure. Foof can spellstone his own minion if he wants to heal desperately. Yeah, like he true. can just play a dreadlord and spellstone it. Yeah. Given that he's not played a single demon this game, Accelerator must be aware that Foof likely has several minions in his hand. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like for Accelerator here, this was just the case of he had so nearly the right pieces, and I think he could have pieced this together to be something, but it, it's just all falling apart. To be fair to him, a couple of the draws were just a little bit too late. Those glyphs didn't do anything. Oh, but he got such a good draw early on. He had the perfect mm -hmm. uh, early game curve with Kirin's Soul Mage plus Secret plus Counterspell. Two Counterspells to deal with those Hellfire. Uh, but I think Fifth there just kind of outplayed him uh, with the dealing with the Secrets. Very nice play with the Demol uh, Demonic Project early on as well to deal with the Counterspell. Uh, yeah, I think Accelerator kind of just got outplayed there. But it looks like we are going to go all the way one more time to game number five, which is... Oh, yes. As Gia was saying a lot yesterday, it's likely in this format. You yeah. you have a lot of decks to choose between with the counter picks. It's rare that you can't find a deck good enough to beat the deck that was just played against you. And that does mean that Titan R Gaming has to find a counter to control Warlock. Um, again, we had a bit of a graphical error which has thrown me for quite the loop um, <laughs> as to what the decks that are left. Do you know what Titan R Gaming has remaining now? Okay, so I believe they have Malagos Druid. Yeah. Um, I think their quest rogue was banned, so yeah. the warrior was defeated already. Peanut Shaman, I think, is another one of their options. Okay. And their own Warlock, which is Mechathun. Okay. Ooh. Mechathun Warlock seems terrible just because of the double demonic project. Yeah, and for the same reason, so does Malagos. Yep. So, in conclusion shaman i guess <laughs> yeah, maybe you have to go for the shaman like what can that do what wins in that does the warlock have um hagatha that it can go for the warlock oh sorry uh not hagatha uh rin sorry rin the first uh which which warlock the dark horses control warlock, control warlock. it does have rin it does I have think. rin yeah hmm it definitely makes things a little bit more interesting uh because the late game fatigue plan uh, for Titan, our game becomes a little bit less viable. Uh, assuming the Rin is found in a timely fashion and is destroyed before it can be transformed, of course, as well. It's a tough position. This Control Warlock does look like it might be quite hard to take down. Yeah. I mean, I think through strong play, any of these decks could do it. Uh, like, again, the, the Malagos Druid, if your Malagos isn't hit with a Demonic Project, you probably are winning that match. Yep. You can do a huge amount of damage with uh, the Malagos combo, well over 30, if you get the twig involved as well. Uh, but it's just, are, are, do you feel able to play around that? It's not easy to do in a deck that runs very few minions. Yeah, if, if the Malagos gets hit, it really is the end of the world. That's what they've gone with anyway. Mm. They're going to go and play, I guess, the most aggressive game that they can. The Control Warlock is very defensive. We've seen double despicable dreadlords, void lords, corpse yep. takers, etc. And Nomferatus could also mill some of these vital pieces, be it the twig, be it the dream petal florist, or Malagos itself. Yep. I think this is going to be a tough game for Titan R Gaming. It really is. But there are some things working in their favor. They have quite a top heavy variant of Malagos Druid with Faceless Manipulator and Tyrantus thrown in there. Uh, which definitely helps them, just to get that little bit of extra burst damage, no matter what the Warlock could throw at them. Uh, but then working against them, they don't have Alexstrasza in their deck in order to cut the health in half. Uh, given that Warlock can't gain much armor, Alexstrasza is very powerful in that matchup. Uh, but even then, uh, I'd say it's a decent deck with up against the Control Warlock, all things considered.
Not a bad hand there from our Korean team up top. Getting the ooze and the lackey. Ooze ready to break that twig whenever they need to. You are more than happy to see a hand like that as obviously this is not Q-Block. This is Control Warlock. Uh, it means the aggressive starts are massively limited. You don't have Giant. You don't have Doomguard. Uh, so you do need to rely on reactive counterplay strategy. Uh, which, like you said, the skull provides, uh, sorry, the ooze provides that nicely. Sound, all things considered, is actually just looking pretty juicy right now. It's it uh, is. Oh, the demonic project as well. This has got the, the perfect mix of development early on, answers later on to be able to deal with those big minions that Alan has in hand. So, when do you think is the correct time to play that demonic project? Uh, well, the ideal scenario is just after your opponents played a dream path Flora uh, because okay. they're only going to do that when they have a Malagos in hand, and very likely when they have few other minions in hand. Yep. Uh, then obviously you start entering all kinds of mind games, uh, because maybe they play the Dream Petal Florist purely to throw you off, just to make you go for something that isn't even in the hand, and then they go for uh, just a Malagos floop victory instead later on down the line. Right. When you already have Malagos in hand, that becomes a lot more difficult to do, obviously, because from this point on, Malagos is in the hand. It can be demonic projected. One of the things that you can do to obviously play around that as much as possible is just keep all your minions in hand as long as possible. Like, it's not necessarily a rule you have to strictly abide by, but this arcane tyrant could just stay in hand for the rest of the game purely to protect the Malagos. Second Arcane Tyrant there. Is it worth holding on to both of them? It's definitely worth considering. Like, if you think you are, you can win through board control and get some damage through to your opponent's face, then go for it. <laughs> As Trump is like a kid in a candy shop as he picks up Skull on Curve here, which really just beautifully smooths out this hand. He can get, what is that, like 23 worth of mana here? Off that five mana skull over the next few turns. Wow. He is not losing board control in a million years now. These are the final two teams to play in this tournament. We've seen everyone else now. All of the other China versus Korea, like actual Chinese team versus Korean teams matches have happened. And so far, China are 3 and 0 oh up. So yeah. if Dark Horse win this, it will be the first win for Korea in this tournament. Alan finally going with the uh, the 6 mana ramp on Nara. Feels pretty awful. Holding back on the Tyrant, which I absolutely agree with. First and foremost, obviously, as I mentioned, to play around the, uh, the Demonic Project. But arguably, even more uh, bigger reason it's just because he's got Plague. You can just go Plague Double Tyrant later on if he really needs to lock down that board control. Ruff just has all of the options in the world here. And I guess he's just got to think about spreading plague. Like how wide does he want to go before that becomes a problem? Yeah. And his board is just looking fine the way it is. In fact, he's just reduced it himself. I like this a lot. Also, Mills a Moonfire. Oh, Whoa, that's pretty good. There's definitely one of the cards you're looking for when there's not Alex Straza in the list. Uh, obviously, Malagos is the absolute dream, but outside of that, Flute, 
Uh, Tyrantus, Moonfire, Twig. Plenty of good options, and he hit one of the good. All right, new strategy here for Alan. He's going all in. Yeah, let's lock down that board. I wouldn't be too surprised to just see a Malagos played onto the board in the, in the course of the game as well. Obviously, he does not know quite how dire the news is, uh, with double Voidlord ready to come down off of the skull for Fuff. He is not going to be getting any of this damage through to Do you think that Demonic Project is tempting now, just because two Arcane Tyrants have just been played? <laughs> it's does... tempting because we can see there's a Malagos in oh, there. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, maybe the double Arcane Tyrant actually says to Firth, there's no Malagos in this hand. Yeah, I mean, it, it's tempting at any time. I just don't think he has to go for it yet. He doesn't have to take the risk. Like, yeah. it's a fine time. There's a decent chance that Malagos is in hand. But you can be so much more likely to hit yeah. it, I think. Your opponent hasn't given you any strong indication that it's there one way or the other. Alan knows he just has to keep turboing onto this board. Quiet. Trying to draw through his deck to hit a uh, florist, maybe go for some kind of an OTK, even though it's looking so much less likely now, uh, with obviously the Moonfire already being burned. Pretty decent selection of cards there, though. Allows him to get the combo rolling if he can get a little bit lucky with that Florist onto the Malagos. That's a big if, though. With Floop in hand, that's never going to be a guarantee. A very large if. And I guess now for Fuff, it's kind of just carrying on as he has been for a while now. I think this is the least good time to throw down a um, demonic project because there will be a bunch of other minions yeah. likely yeah, um, that he could hit collaterally. But look at that. He's just going to start to get this ring going. Quite out of seal. Obviously, with Skull on the board, Azari the Devourer will not get a battle cry this game. But yeah. it's a lot of stats. It's a free 10-10. And it won't necessarily not activate because you can do some demonic project stuff to turn other minions in your hand That's true. Uh, into demons. But I agree. It's very likely that it will just be a 10 10. So I guess Alan, this turn is going to be looking at. Malfurion to lead into Plague plus Branching Paths to maybe try and get a foothold on this board. It really does not feel fantastic. Or just Tyrantus. There we go. Let's get that back. Fuff can deal with the Tyrantus, but it would require Twisting Nether this turn. Um, more to the point, he's got so many taunts down, he probably just doesn't need to worry about Tyrantus. Yeah, there um, there is a face. Sorry, there is a faceless in the deck, which is a little bit scary. Uh, but I guess, like you said, if uh, Twisting Nether can deal with one Tyrant, definitely yep. two. And so yeah, Fuff saying, I think correctly realizing this isn't all too big of a deal. A Tyranthus on his opponent's side of the board, if anything, it just means there's one less Plague Scarab uh, that's going to be summoned whenever that does come down.
so still, I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's still winnable for Alan here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's looking less good and less good. <laughs> it is. I would say. The moon fire being burned earlier was pretty big. Yeah, that was really bad. But maybe Malagos Floop could happen. Malagos gets played. I guess then Demonic Project gets played straight after. But yeah, like I mean, let's assume in the dream scenario that Malag the Demonic Project misses Malagos. I mean, how many things does it have to miss? Floop, Dream Petal, and Malagos are all pretty core to winning this game. I, think. I can't help but think Dream Petal's never getting played. Like, I'm wondering if he, to Alan goes with the Malagos, lets it be dealt with, and then the plan is to floop after and then swipe Moonfire. <sighs> it's not great, though. Yeah, so we do see the, the plague uh, into uh, the branching path. It's more or less the plan I was describing, but with a Tyrantus thrown in there first. Yep. And it does mean that he has, you know, a little bit of damage represented on the board. This is a bit awkward for Fuff to deal with with just a Hellfire, just a Defile. Uh, he obviously has the Godfrey uh, instead to mop this up very nicely. Uh, although, not quite so easy to get. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. With the um, the Librarian as well, it's pretty easy to get the Godfrey. So yeah, it does look more and more like Alan is going to be all in I'm trying to get that OTK with Malagos, or maybe not OTK, but at least get some nice burst damage through. Second demonic project drawn. So the problem with double demonic project is that the second demonic project can hit the demon that was generated by the first one. It's true. So that doesn't mean that's two minions that get turned into demons. It's more like that. Yeah. And yeah, more and more, just looking at Alan's game plan, is running out of any kind of juice. Hastert has hoped to hit a big minion with Florist, but I think he knows as soon as he goes with the Florist, it's just going to be an instant hit of the Demonic Project to try and deal with the Malagos. Foof is just praying again. Yeah, so instead, it's just going to be Malagos straight up here from Alan, hoping there's no answer. It's and there, nothing can be done to deal with this. There is no answer. There's the owl, but there's, there's no the answer owl. for the body. That's fair. Which does represent some damage. But here come the demonic projects. There's the floop. Yeah. And that seems like game over. Yeah, it's going to have to be a very impressive series um, of Malagos smacks through to the face, which I don't think uh, Alan, to be honest, really has it in him. Uh, this is still Control Warlock, but it's still got a really powerful suite of defensive tools. And five cards left in the deck. Gul'dan's got to come down sometime soon. That feeling when your four mana Malagos becomes a Howl Fiend. Feels bad, man. Plus five spell damage is a little bit better than discard my own hand. <laughs> Fair enough. And no, uh, no what? No treach. Uh, available to Alan to <laughs> discard his opponent's hand. But I think from Alan, the uh, the real spot here was just knowing he could just go for a Malagos onto the brave that that gets him there. Because yep. I think it was a good realization of the likely outcome, which is if he doesn't play Malagos from his hand and plays Florist instead, it gets demonic projected the vast majority of the time. Mm. given that the Twisting Nether had been used up as well. And that's sort of being the main piece of removal that could deal with Malagos. It was a good risk to take. But now there are two 412s on the board and still seemingly no answer for them. So Alan's still alive and kicking. He's, yeah, I mean, he's hanging on for the moment. I... Um, still, again, Gul'dan creeping closer and closer and closer. Uh, but like you said, these are doing something at least to fight back. <laughs> and he is behind on fatigue as well it's worth saying so alan 
has got himself in a position for the moment where in the fatigue war he is currently winning. Even though that looks like another Rin has been generated. <laughs> doesn't matter how many Rins you've got. It's, it's Well, I mean, it's a lot of value, but Fuff actually doesn't need value right now. He needs a way of getting rid of these Malagos. Yeah, which he, he still doesn't have, man. Like, I don't know what was... <laughs> calling this one looking uh, over a bit too early. I mean, there is the Gul'dan, which is so big for Fuff now, just because it makes a board that is going to be difficult for Alan to deal with at all. Yeah. All of the Void Lords, all of the Void Walkers. Yeah, I mean, okay, giving up on the uh, the fatigue game plan here completely is Alan, just hoping that he can get there with swipes through to the face, but that looks like it might be... Oh. <laughs> just seeing the fist pumps from Foof when the Naturalize yeah. was burned, that's... Uh... Burning the Naturalize is awful. Uh, poor old man. That was not what he wanted to see at all. I mean, losing the other swipe would have been bad too, but he just really wanted, he needed to see the swipe and the naturalize, I think. There's the Gul'dan, which stops any minion pressure going through to face whatsoever. Second swipe. Even though it only gets one Void Lord. Okay, one Void Lord does mean Alan still kind of has a chance, I guess. If he goes double attack into the Void Lord. Double swipe. Double swipe. So, so what's he swiping? Two of the Void Walkers or the face twice? I'm not sure. Double swipe the face. Wrath one of the void that's really bad. Hmm. I mean that needed to happen though if he was gonna have a chance, because these Mali geese are his only hope in this game. I'm guessing those corpse takers are just nothing now. They're just I think they do nothing. Days. Yeah, Zilliax, both Void Walkers, both Stone Hills have been found. Yeah, okay, he's just trying to clear the board to keep these Malagosses alive. Futile though it may be. Well, I don't know. He clears everything, right? No, one of the Malagos attacked already. He clears almost everything. Pretty so much fifth, everything. Fifth can go Hellfire, Hero Power, Spellstone. So he can okay. actually deal with one okay. of the Malagos this turn. This is kind of something now, I suppose. So if he goes like attack into the weaker one with his Void Walker, Hellfire, Hero Power, Spellstone deals with yeah. the other. Hmm. I think that might be what he's looking at. Doesn't feel great though. I, I guess he just knows his opponent has nothing left. That's the thing, right? Like if he can just deal with these Malagos, in theory, all of the burns gone. He's seen both swipes and both moon fires. This should just be the end of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what he's going for in the end. Two more pings and this Malagos gets dealt with after this turn. It shouldn't be killing him at that time. In any case, it's dealing four damage. The hero power is healing for three. Oh, he's not even going to bother. He's just going face. Yeah, I think he wants to close out this game a bit quicker. All right, minions, minions. He's still got another spell stone. I think it's the last card in his deck anyway. But yeah, <laughs> going all in with anything he can throw onto. We're trying to get that last bit of damage through to the face. He has done an amazing job, I think, just to get to this point. As it is, another spell stone is the last card. I feel as well like this demonic project should maybe have come down sooner, just so he has something that he can pull out. Ooh. With the skull, but that is not something that you want to summon with the skull. That's something that you want to use to oh, kill the Malagos. It means you can kill the yeah, it means he Hell can... Fiend right now. Or he could spell stone and ping the Malagos after. No, he mm. couldn't. He doesn't have the mana for that. So yeah, it would yeah. be killing the Hell Fiend now, but it would be... It's more taking damage he's taking eight damage there. from the oh, Malagos. Close, man. Close. 
This game felt weird from Fluff as well. Like, now that we're at the end and he hasn't played any seals, basically. He didn't play that demonic project for the longest time. Wrath is probably the one card Alan didn't really want to lose there. And yeah. Twig is the other one, because that's just damage every turn. Woof. Those are literally the two worst cards for him to discard again. Yep. But he is going all out here, just trying to close out this game right now. He knows his opponent has basically nothing left. And okay. Of, could this just be it? So, Fiff is taking two damage from Fatigue next turn, so he's taking ten. Puts him down to four. He takes 11, 12, 13 with the hero power. So is he one damage off dying? I think so, yeah. <sighs> this game is so close, dude. And if Alan doesn't clear off everything, he's dead. Yep, I think Alan's one damage off lethal right now. It's crazy. This has to have been an easier way for Fuck to lock out this game. Like, playing the Demonic Project earlier to summon a minion off of the... The skull. So Alan needs to armor up and kill two of these minions. Because I think he's taking three fatigue damage next turn. The hero power deals another three. And then if one of these minions deals three, that's nine damage. So Alan needs yep. to gain armor. Which means he's not dealing any damage to fifth this turn. But his board is more resilient. It is. I mean, he, he doesn't have a choice, all right? No, he doesn't. But I think if we just see... Hero power, the florist down, and then go face... Like, this has to just be pretty much game now. He, Foth yeah. just needs to not die. He just needs to survive, which I think he can definitely do. Alan is deeper into fatigue. Fuff has more resources. Fuff has the better hero power. Just think, if Alan hadn't discarded Twig there for the one extra damage. Yeah, yeah, that would have just... if he hadn't just... lost Moonfire earlier on for the one extra damage. What an insane game. And Fuff, quite rightly, looks very excited to finally have that game be over.